This is One on One. We are pleased to be joined once again by Dr. Robert Hodson, president and founder of uh, Road to Recovery. Good to see you, Bob. You too, Steve. I think Thanks. It's four or five times you've been with us. Yep. Your expertise, you're a former priest. Yes. You understand the uh, sex abuse scandal in the priesthood better than anyone else in the Catholic Church. We just had Senator Joseph Vitale check out that interview, who is calling for a uh, grand jury investigation. Attorney General in the state of New Jersey doing the same thing into this case. Pennsylvania did, as you called it, what? I called some, uh, Philadelphia, or Pennsylvania, rather, a seminal study, seminal grand jury investigation. Because? Well, it, it left no stone unturned. It, it really looked into the depths of the crisis there. And found? And found 1,000 victims and 300 priests. And since the report was issued, hundreds have come forward to that same hotline. What do we need to do in New Jersey? <clears throat> By the way, New Jersey has a hotline. Check out our site. And Jackie, let's make sure we get that uh, website up because people, dozens and hundreds of people are calling the Attorney General's website yes. uh, hotline on this. Yeah, I applaud uh, Attorney General Graywall for doing this. Uh, it has to be done. I've called for it for decades. Uh, as an insider for over 40 years in the church, I kind of knew what was going on there. And um, I know, you know, I was kind of like a voice in the wilderness for a while, mm -hmm. but now people are listening. And that's, it's what has to be done. You know, it's interesting. I've never said this on the air before, but Ted McCarrick, um, the Archbishop of the Archdiocese I grew up in, um, elevated since then in the Catholic Church, in Metuchen, Archbishop there as well. He was an important uh, figure in my life, my family's life. He was a spiritual advisor in my family. Yeah. Tell folks what he did. Well, Ted McCarrick ordained Allegedly me. Allegedly did. Well, he ordained me to the priesthood in 1997, but in 1994. Well, he did do that. Yeah. What, what was the word for a long time, according to many in the uh, church? Well, before we knew about his pedophilic behavior, we knew that he was sleeping with seminarians, and he would invite seminarians en masse to his Jersey Shore house in Seagirt, and he would always be one bed short, and someone would have to sleep with him. Uh, I'm currently working with a priest in Metuchen who uh, is still attempting to recover from all this. Bob, who knew about this in the church hierarchy? Everybody knew about it, Steve. Did now, the Pope know about it? I believe the Pope knew about it. You don't know, it. you think. I believe the Pope knew about it. I believe the Cardinals knew about it. There wasn't anybody who didn't hear about Theodore McCarrick's antics. Theodore McCarrick was a him. giant in the Catholic Church. Yeah. No yeah. one touched it. No one took it on. No, 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 because McCarrick was such a charismatic figure in many ways. He, he, you know, he was very socially uh, adept, you know. Politically he, active. Politically engaged, active. Engaged, connected. Engaged, right. When we, we've been trying to get the Child Victims Act passed in New Jersey, he called every legislator and told them not to do it, uh, and they believed him. He had juice, as we like to say, in That's New Jersey. Absolutely. And where are we now with him? Well, he's, he's now a disgraced figure. He's living on, a, you know, by himself, and... He will, not get a, he will not get a cardinal's funeral. He will barely get a priest's funeral, if, if that. Too little, too late? Oh, much too little, too late. You know, in 94, when I applied to become a priest here, uh, I asked the question, is McCarrick still sleeping with the seminarians? What? Oh, yes, in 94. Uh, it was McCarrick who... 24 years ago as we do this program. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, McCarrick asked me to speak to Monsignor Bill Fedrowski, who at that time was the head of catechetics for the archdiocese because he had a similar story to me. I, he had been a brother, I was a brother. So he said, why don't you talk to Bill? My first question as we met in a little Spanish restaurant in Harrison was, Bill, has McCarrick stopped sleeping with the seminarians? I was afraid that I might be sucked into that because I had been abused yeah. previously as an Irish Christian brother. By the way, I was trained by the Irish Christian brothers, as you well know, at Essex right. Catholic and later at Iona. I too. Oh yeah. boy. Um, what do we need to do right now? Got a couple minutes left. What do we really need to do? Get action. We need to hold these dioceses accountable. Uh, the, the attorney general in Pennsylvania had, had a great, uh, has a great plan, had a great plan and, and did it. When he had to raid diocese files, he did it. Uh, if we need to, does the attorney general in New Jersey need to be raiding files of diocese offices? I, I believe he does because we have what is called secret files. And those secret files contain the most important information for the most part. What about the statute of limitations? We have to get rid of the statute of limitations and hopefully do our best getting rid of it. There shouldn't be any statute of limitations on murder of the soul. We don't have it on murder of the body. Yeah. We shouldn't have it on murder Minute of the left. soul. What does Road to Recovery do? 
We work with sexual abuse victims and their families. We've worked with over, we have worked with over 5,000 victims since 2003. 5,000. Yeah, N internationally. Church says, trust us on this. We'll handle it ourselves. No, the church cannot be trusted. It's been proven, clearly proven. One more question that's personal for me and, and more personal for many watching. Folks say, I'm torn by going to church because I don't know where that money's going. I, it's hard for me to listen to a priest who's up there speaking because I don't know if he, in fact, was either engaged directly or was complicit in the process. Is that some wacky thinking? Well, I feel for the people because I don't think they should give up their faith. Right. As I tell people, my faith has never been stronger. Faith in the church? Right. My religion has never been weaker, however, because I, I have a hard time dealing with those who are attempting to lead us in this religion. Uh, so what I would suggest to those folks is hold your church accountable, but continue, of course, to nourish yourself spiritually. Bob Oates and uh, Rotary Cover on. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Steve. Keep doing what you're right. doing to help yeah, a we'll whole do. range of people who have been victims and should never have been in the first place. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. The Northward Center, New Jersey Resources, ADP, The Fidelco Group, and by Fedway Associates. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.